Welcome, and welcome back for those of you who are returning. My name is Kuski, and today I just have a little quick update for you with the readathon and how it's going. So stick around and join me for that. readathon and I'm not sure about you but I've been doing a lot of reading and also I've been pretty busy. This is a very hectic time and it's kind of hard not to get caught up in the frenzy of all that's going on around you. Today I had a very long day. I spent some time with my family and we went to SeaWorld um, and enjoyed the festivities there. And it was quite fun, very tiring. There was a lot of walking. It's very humid here in Texas. And so um, I'm really hot and definitely not uh, sweater weather, but um, I wanted to wear my Snoopy uh, Christmas tree uh, sweater. So here's a little peek. You can see those are all the woodstocks and there's Snoopy. Um, I was quite happy when I found this, and even though it was pretty hot here, I think we got to 79, maybe even higher, I still wore it. Just suffered a bit, but what can you do? It's South Texas. So, today I'm going to update you on what I've been reading. So, I finished a couple books, um, a couple of, and I added a couple books to my TBR. I don't know if I'm just being crazy or just a little ambitious. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm currently reading Mrs. Dalloway um, by Virginia Woolf. I've heard this is a very controversial book. Um, it's very one of her most popular um, books, I believe. But at the same time, I guess the jury's out on how um, successful this book is. Some people like it. Some people don't. Um, so far, I have to say, um, it's been a little difficult. Um, this story takes place all in one day, I believe. And I like the writing. Um, I have this on audio. The library had it on audio, so I had this on audio. Um, I like the way the narrator is going. Um, I love the way it's written. But it does jump, and you really have to pay attention up to all the characters mentioning mentioned and um this woman's kind of reminiscing and kind of so it does kind of slip i think back and forth into present and, and past um but um i want to get through it hopefully i can finish it this month um but it's not one of my original um tbr books so what i did finish that was actually on my tbr the greatest gift 
by Philip Van Dornstern. So this story was is actually the tale that inspired the movie It's a Wonderful Life. Um, it is a very dear movie that I loved watching when I was a child with my mom. And um, the main killer, excuse me, the main character um, that uh, was portrayed by Jimmy Stewart. So if you don't know this story, George Bailey, uh, we kind of start off with George Bailey, who is not feeling it at the moment. And he's actually considering if his life is worth living, actually. He's quite depressed, and all of a sudden, he uh, is startled by a stranger, funny sort of stranger, who starts questioning him and his actions and kind of irritates George. But um, this story kind of takes on a life of its own, and we find George um, tossed into a reality that of his, is of his own making. He actually wanted not to be born, so his wish is granted, and he gets a peek at what his life, what life would be like if he hadn't been born. So, sorry about the spoiler. It's um, it's pretty much just a tale of what if, and um, George starts to realize maybe his life wasn't as bad as he thought. It's a very dear story. Um, the movie's wonderful, no pun intended. Um, I loved this movie growing up, and the story was very, the story pretty much was about the same, except, of course, the movie embellished um, a lot more. Um, it is Hollywood, so they kind of added to it, but the main story pretty much is intact. We get the characters, and um, the, the main story kind of stays the same. You know, George is um, depressed, and he's he uh, encounters a stranger who kind of gives him a peek at what he was actually wanting to, what he wanted, and um, and then it goes from there. So um, I really enjoyed this this story. It wasn't as long as I thought. I was kind of surprised. Usually books are a lot. Um, there's a lot more to them than the actual movie counterpart, but in actual the adaptation, the movie adaptation has a lot more. To it than the story it's a little the story is a little bit more simple um but it pretty much gets the same point across and it it's a very charming story i had it on audio and i really enjoyed it and i have to say that even though um it wasn't on the screen um i could still envision the characters and actually the voices of clarence seem to be spot on for me but of course it's been many years since i've seen this movie I might try to see if I can find it just to watch it again. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's um, finished that. It was really, really enjoyable. Gave it five stars. I think I did do a review on Goodreads, um, but I'll link it down below if uh, I did. I'm, I'm not sure because I finished this, I think, on Friday. We are now on Monday morning, so, well, early Monday morning. <laughs> Um, so the next book I finished was Amazing Peace by Maya Angelou. This is a, actually a Christmas poem, um, and it is, uh, was made into, a, just made into a children's storybook. So I have this also on, um, ebook, actually. I have this on, sorry, I get confused. There's been a lot of reading going on. I thought it was audio, but it actually was just an e-reader. And I really enjoyed this this um, poem. It was very inspiring, very uplift, uplifting, um, as my Angelou's writing usually is. Um, very inclusive. I also finished The Star of Christmas by Pamela Dalton. Um, this is another storybook um, that I had on my e-reader. Um, and it just gives us the story of Mary and Joseph. Um, and how um, our Lord is brought into this world. Um, it was a very lovely book. Um, apparently, um, Pamela Dalton created the illustrations out of um, paper cuttings. So she actually cut, um, she does this artistry where 
she cuts paper and I was quite impressed after I finished the book. There was a little excerpt about that. I did not know. I thought it was illustrated. Um, so that was really lovely to hear that. And apparently the story itself was um, a poem, I believe, by St. Francis. Um, St. Francis of Assisi, I think. Um, again, I will put that in the description box below um, because I know it was St. Francis, but I'm not sure if I'm, it was, I'm correct and it was St. Francis of Assisi, but I believe it was a poem um, and they used that in the story. Um, well, that is the story that they used for this book. So it was quite interesting to learn that, um, well, obviously I didn't retain as much as I thought. But it was interesting to know that it was a poem by one of the saints um, that they used for the story and to find out about how the illustrations actually were but, um, created. So um, that was, I think I'm pretty sure I gave that five stars, but if I didn't, I will put that also in the description box below. So I think that's all I, oh no, there was another story, um, children's story, I think. Um, I found a lot of uh, really cute, um, just heartwarming, uh, children's Christmas stories. Um, and this one was called Too Many Tamales, I believe. Yes, Too Many Tamales by Gary Soto. So this takes place, I believe, on Christmas Eve, and it's the story of Maria. So Maria's spending Christmas Eve with her family, and her parents and her make a batch of tamales, um, homemade tamales, and they're waiting the arrival of their extended family. So their cousins and aunts and uncles are coming over to share Christmas with them. And during the course of um, the um, process of making tamales, um, there was a little mishap that Maria ends up losing her, her mom's ring. And um, she's thinking that it's possibly could have fallen into the the masa, the the batter they use to make the tamales. So, if you're Hispanic, Mexican, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it is um, a mixture of, out of cornmeal. I believe it's cornmeal. Um, I've never really made tamales. I love them, and um, Maurita, my mom, had made them, but I never learned. So I'm a little disappointed to say that I, I never actually made them, but um, they're very uh, delicious and um, and very fun to make. I mean, it's a process, but um, I've seen my aunts and my Juanita do it. And it's a very honored tradition um, that families get together and then make tamales and good times are had and it just brings the family together. And then at the end, you have some delicious tamales to eat, and there's so many variations. Um, there even are sweet ones, um, where it's um, like more like a uh, kind of a dessert. So it's a little, it's got some um, fruit, and it's more sweet. Well, it's sweet actually, but um, this is a really uh, cheerful story. I really enjoyed reading. It. So I really enjoyed listening to this. I had this on audio and um, I really love the characters and um, it just brought me, you know, back to my roots and I really, I just really liked it. I gave it five stars, I'm pretty sure, on Goodreads and um, that's about it so far. I'm currently listening to, I'm currently listening to The Christmas Box by... Yeah, I'm currently listening to The Christmas Box by Richard Paul Evans. Um, this is actually another addition to my team yard that I added um, after my initial announcement video, my TBR video. Um, and um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm intrigued so far. Um, I, I think I've seen the movie adaptation of this story, but I really don't remember the story very well but i believe that the narrator for the audio that i have the audio book i have um is actually the actor who played um the same character well played the character 
that he's narrating. So if that's not confusing, um, I can't remember his name right now because, like I said, a lot of reading had, has been going on and I had a full day at the theme park today. So, I mean, well, it's not today anymore. It's the next day. It's Monday, actually, early Monday. Um, and I should really be in bed because I have to get up early and see my daughter off to the bus, school bus. But I just wanted to get some filming in because it's kind of hard to get filming and editing and reading and <laughs> everything else that's going on right now um, in our in our in my life at the moment. Um, it's it's just a lot um, going on, and um, so I wanted to take some time to make this video for you um so i hope you enjoyed it um there are a couple more additions uh to my tbr but i think i'm just gonna talk about them as i make the videos because um it's gonna be a lot of editing to do um if i just blurt them out all together right now but so far i'm pretty um happy i guess i should say um of how it's going with the reading and um, I'm really enjoying everything that I'm reading. Uh, try not to get stressed about everything um, because that was the whole reason for this readathon just to like enjoy Christmas and to not get so bogged down with everything that's going on around. And it's really hard to do because there's so much going on and you feel this pressure. And every time you turn on the TV or you listen to the radio, there's some, or even if your phone's just pinging with all these emails you're getting from these stores that are like we're having this sale or shop now and look at what's on sale now <laughs> i mean i kid you not we we um had been i've been working um my husband and i have been working on getting my emails down and um we got our the emails down pretty pretty low and we're at 800 again so it's just bad and the majority of them are mostly just you know, stores trying to get us to shop. And it's really sad because you go on these sites and they don't have what they're advertising or you go, you see something you like and it's sold out. So it was, a, it was a waste of my time and a disappointment on top of that. So that's pretty sad. I don't know, um, are you guys having the same trouble with Christmas shopping? Because I know that I've been having disappointment after disappointment. I just not finding what I'm looking for or what family members are hoping to receive. So we'll see what happens on Christmas Eve. We, we actually celebrate Christmas Eve in our home. And uh, after mass on Christmas Eve, that's usually when we open our presents. So sometime after midnight, um, we tend to do that. So we'll just see how that goes um, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this year. Um, actually, I just, I don't really like to get, um, for a couple, for a few years, I've been trying not to get too serious about gifts anymore. I really don't, like, need to be shopping in a frenzy and, I mean, but it's kind of hard, especially now after, well, COVID's still going on, but it seems like everyone's, you know, wanting to make the most of this and it seems like everyone's, like, shopping and, I think my kids have kind of taken um, our little step back out the window because we used to, um, we had, as a family, well, my husband and I <laughs> decided to like, you know, let's just enjoy the season and not really focus as much on gifts. So we kind of tailored it down and my kids kind of had to, you know, go with that. But it seems like this year it's all out the window. My, my son is, you know, he's an adult and he lives on his own and I don't know, he's been <laughs> shopping, um, and, um, my daughter just keeps <laughs> sending me texts, so I like this, and, oh, here's something else I forgot to tell you about, so, um, we'll just see, we'll see, because it's just hard, I mean, my, it's, and it's, and my husband's kind of difficult to shop for anyways, because he's not somebody that really has, the, like, oh, oh, I like this, so he does that, he doesn't really have a lot of hobbies, and he's quite happy, just sit him just take him to the casino and he that's what he likes to do and just have fun um and that's not always easy to do so 
but I didn't want to make this a long video for you, but um, hopefully you did enjoy it and um, they'll come back again for another one, but until the next one, but until next time, take care, God bless, see you soon.